Hello, it is Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, midweek puzzle, midweek difficulty. And uh, yesterday was a Tuesday puzzle, a little bit, well, I was going to say a little bit easier, but actually I honestly found yesterday to be on the trickier side for a Tuesday puzzle. And I think I think other people broadly agreed. I think that was the sense I got from the um, Discord chat server and the comments. And there were a couple of uh, clues that people left comments about, and I will I'll read those now. So regarding the non-conventional spelling of various journalistic terms like lead, the lead sentence, for instance, of an article being L-E-D-E rather than L-E-A-D or head being H-E-D rather than H-E-A-D. Tyler Davis says, I worked in newspapers for a bit. This may be somewhat apocryphal, but what I was always told was that words like lead and head were spelled like that because they would frequently be used as placeholder text on the page as a story came together. And the hope was that a copy editor would at least find the misspelling, preventing a page from going to production with placeholder text. That's interesting. I would be, I would, <laughs> I would neither be surprised if that were apocryphal or if it were uh, legitimate. If I had to guess, I would guess that that was maybe an early rationale that somebody did at a particular newsroom, and then eventually it just became convention, and um, and uh, now it's just just how it is. But who knows? Furious Flamingo says, I think it was just a slip of the tongue, but a Toro seeing red is the bull, not the matador. And yes, that is correct. I, I got those mixed up somehow. The matador or toreador, I guess, is uh, the Toro is the bull itself. All right. And Z, uh, ZOR95 explains that a mole, the unit, a mole, uh, is a number of things equal to Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. It is defined such that one mole of carbon-12, i.e. carbon atoms containing exactly six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus, weighs exactly 12 grams, or at least it used to be. In 2019, it was just defined as one Avogadro's number worth of stuff. So now it is just a, uh, what is a unitless measurement? All right, Remy, that Remy has a funny observation that I didn't really notice solving the puzzle. Remy points out wild or wilder, mile or mole, level or lever, two themes for the price of one. These were all clues from yesterday's puzzle, and they're all or clues whose two words differ by a single letter. I didn't really notice that uh, that little bit of echoing throughout the grid, so that was, that was a nice spot on the part of Remy. All right, those are all the, I think those are all of the comments I saw anyway in my glance um, at the comment section. So I will remind you quickly about the new Twitter account at The Daily Solve. You can follow that for daily posts about this series. Um, you can subscribe to the channel. Please do. We're, I think, about between 20 and 30 people away from hitting 4,000 subscribers, which is very exciting. Again, totally arbitrary number, but uh, it'll be nice. It'll be nice to hit that big a big round number of 4,000. So thanks for subscribing. And there's the uh, Discord chat server, which I which I mentioned a moment ago. That's free to join for anybody. And you can communicate with other members of the community, other people who watch this series about New York Times crosswords, other crosswords, other puzzles. It's a nice, it's a nice place. And you can get an extra channel over there. You can get enhanced access by backing the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve. And of course, there you can also get a wealth of of new um, bonus videos that go up on a weekly basis. And actually, it's the 1st of December, which means it's a new month. So if you've been waiting for the new month to take over before you made your pledge on the Patreon, today's the day to do it. You'll get the most value for a pledge made today because it's the whole the whole month to come. Okay, uh, let's get on to the puzzle. This is a crossword constructed by Christopher Youngs and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And uh, it will be a theme. There will be a theme today. It is the Wednesday puzzle. So it's a themed puzzle. No title, but we'll be on the lookout for something. So ready to get started? I say yes. Okay. Titan of industry. Titan of industry. I don't know if this, I mean, this could conceivably refer to a brand 
called Titan, an industry is sort of a company called Titan. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what this is referring to. I feel as though this could be a few different things. Let's keep looking around. Heads of staff. Could be S's. You never know. Could be the, the first letter of the word staff, which would be more than one S phonetically spelled this way. Let's see if that if that helps. What is this? Crazy in Spanish. Yeah, I guess it's probably not S's. It's crazy in Spanish, I would think to be loco. And then does that help? Church cross. Church cross. And here we have nostril burning. That could be acrid, an acrid odor, a really sharp odor. It makes your eyes water or your nostrils burn. Swordsman with a horse named Tornado. Didn't remember this, but I'm guessing it's Zoro based on the number of letters and that O down there. Seems likely. Titan of industry. A czar? What am I missing here? Um, what about what about this? Play a wrong note during a violin sonata. Could start with air, as in make an error and play a wrong note in this case. Oh, air on a G string, perhaps, or the G string. Maybe so. Air on the G string. That's a, I guess, a violin sonata. I hadn't remembered it was a sonata specifically, but it's a famous violin piece. And I wonder if the theme is uh, something around homophones, puns, where we're common phrases. I mean, it could be pieces of music. It could be phrases more broadly. Um, so that could be it. What is this? Artist Kahlo would be Frida Kahlo, the famous artist. And then what do we have here? Golf club supply could be sod which is, um, I don't know, the the soil, the I suppose, that that you would use to replace a divot maybe in golf, I'm guessing. Oh, heads of staff. And this is a fun, actually, a fun cross with air on the G-string, which is a musical answer, because the heads of staff could be clefts, musical clefts that go at the beginning of a musical staff and indicate uh, what the sort of range of notes in that staff is going to be. So I suppose a titan of industry is a czar. Why? <laughs> Why is that? Um, hmm. Is it sort of a czar in the sense of, you know, sometimes in government, you'll you'll have a, a czar appointed to a particular policy area to oversee things, including maybe regulation of industry of that. Yeah, I don't know. Don't quite get it. I'm sorry. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. <laughs> Only domestic species in the family Philly Day. Um, is that the cat? Sort of looks like it. And then here we have peyote and prickly pear. Um, so this is an and clue, which means it's plural. And I think in this case it's cacti, um, not cactus singular, but cacti, which I think can also be cactuses. Um, I think that's also acceptable. All right. She created the olive tree in myth. Is this Athena? I believe so. So let's check, let's check the crosses. Literary partner of Porthos and Aramis. So these are two of the three musketeers, the other of which is Athos, is his name? And a 39 across successor. I'm just sorry, I'm checking all of these crosses as I get these words filled in here. Here we have Oh, sorry. We have, wait, what was that? Oh, I see. Nine down, 39 across successor abbreviation. Looks like the International Space Station, doesn't it? And then down here, we have largest, largest artificial satellite in orbit before nine down. Ah, so probably Mir, right? Which is Russian for peace, but also other things. I forget. It means, it means peace, but also I think maybe world? I don't remember. Uh, but I bet that was the largest artificial satellite in orbit before the International Space Station. And here we have blank toy, could be chew toy, a dog's chew toy, for instance, and a source of milk for manchego cheese must be a ewe, a, a, a female sheep. And if people are in a relationship, they are together. Ripped 
could be tore or torn. It just depends on particular the particular tense of ripped, which I don't think it's possible to identify without a cross, so I'm going to leave that for now. And actress Hatcher could be Terry Hatcher, certainly aware of her. And then anthem contraction. So this will probably be in the United States National Anthem, which has the contraction or for over or the ramparts in there for over the ramparts. And then suffix with auction. So sort of following a little, doing a little stair step. We're doing a, a stepping down this flight of stairs as we fill these crosses. Suffix with auction could be auctioneer. And then we say, I see, hay for horses. And there's a question mark indicating this is some kind of pun or wordplay. And in that, in this case, I think what, how we're meant to read this is, this is how horses might say, hey, it's hey, something to get your attention, but for horses, which in this case, I suppose would be nay, what a horse says. All right, one might read, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. That might be a mug. One mug might also read, let's check the crosses. And that is the mug you can get by backing the Daily Solve Patreon campaign at the benefactor level. And actually, I suppose I will be, uh, I think with my December contribution to my own Patreon campaign, I think that will um, get me to the point where I will be receiving a mug in the mail. There wasn't any way for me to get my own mug that I designed without backing the campaign myself. So I did it. And I think within a week or two, I will be getting my mug. And I've heard they're very high quality. I'm told that um, from people who I trust on that score, who have received theirs. Anyway, all right, here we have skill never performed by 15 across, oddly enough. Um, skill never performed by Athos. This is probably quite obvious. What would it be? Something around swordplay or dueling. I mean, you'd think that would be the odd, the odd one, but I'm not sure. Word with stand or drop could be mic stand or mic drop. Those are both common phrases. Oh, and here we probably have another theme clue. We all put things on TV sometimes. It's in the air. No, it doesn't quite work with that eye. And I think it's uh, one letter short. could end with the air because something being on TV is on the air, but I don't know. And actually this had air in it as well, didn't it? So maybe specifically this is around air. And actually when you look at this one, which is also a theme answer, this looks like it might be the word air. In other words, someone who inherits something. And yes, the clue is little prince taking a bath. So an air, some, uh, Little Prince taking a bath. Air washer. Clean air. Clean air act. <laughs> I see. Clean air act is <laughs> the act of a little prince taking a bath. The little the the air is becoming clean. All right, so yes, that that is the theme. It is specifically around air. Um, it's not music, and it's not homophones more generally. It is a specific um, homophone. All right, home of the first pizza, Naples, Napoli, and to totally wreck as a noob. Wow, this is a surprising thing to be in the New York Times crossword. And honestly, at this point, I think quite out of date. I think this is PWN, which is, I don't really know what the origin of, I don't know where this comes from exactly, but it's a way of spelling the word own that was used in sort of online speak. I don't know, probably 10 to 15 years ago, most commonly. I mean, it's really not, I, well, I suppose it's entirely possible it is still ubiquitous and I'm just not really aware of that scene anymore. But um, anyway, it's it's a it's a strange online spelling of own, meaning to destroy somebody, as it says, to totally wreck as a noob and noob as a contraction of newbie or new player, someone who's not skilled is indicating that we're sort of online slang. Okay, 
So a calendar abbreviation, I suppose, is Wednesday. That's kind of a tough cross. Well, I guess it's calendar abbreviation because the thing is, you know, calendar abbreviation could be September. I mean, it could be other things beyond Wednesday. And this PWN, this own is so strange that hopefully this D, yeah, went it alone. So it's in the, it's a something that happened in the past. So it'll probably end with ED. So I guess at that point, once you see this ED, you know, it's going to be Wednesday, but this would be a baffling thing, wouldn't it? Okay. Delegation. And then here we have went it alone. It could be soloed. Maybe we have filter through could be seep through and blank O's post serial. I'm not sure. Whatever blank wants blank gets damn Yankees lyric. I've actually never seen damn Yankees. All right, let's keep looking around. Get out could be scat. Maybe let's try that and see. Well, this is no two T's in a row for the word timbre doesn't really make sense, but timbre could be tone, the timbre of your voice, the tone of your voice, for instance, or of an, or of an instrument. And then roll of stamps, roll of stamps, and here we have Obsessed Captain. This would be the literary fig figure, Captain Ahab from Moby Dick. And then uh, Get Out is Shoe, I see. Okay, another, uh, very similar to Scat, I guess. And here we have Leave a Mark On, could be Stain, to stain your reputation, leave a mark on it, or obviously the more literal version. A roll of stamps, what, a coil, a coin? A quaff? What am I not seeing? Coil? Is a roll of stamps a coil? No can do. Well, I guess it is a coil because no can do would be unable. So is... Yeah, I suppose a roll of stamps is literally a coil. It's just not... It's just not... Uh, we wouldn't ordinarily call it that, but I suppose that is that is literally true. All right. What wearing a, short, a shirt at the beach might get you? Uh, it might get you a farmer's tan where you have part of your arm, for instance, incredibly tanned from the sun and then part of it uh, much lighter because your shirt was covering it. A roast host could be an MC, master of ceremonies, but turned into a word in its own right, MC. A roast, in this case, one of those uh, events in which the honored person is is uh, insulted in humorously and in good faith by their colleagues. All right. Former Attorney General Holder, this would be uh, United States Attorney General Eric Holder, one of three in the foreground of American Gothic. This is that painting with the, uh, the farmer couple and the man, I think, is holding a pitchfork. And so I'm guessing this is one of three tines. And it's one of three. So even though there are three of them, we're only referring to one. So it's singular tine. And I think it's probably the tine of the of the pitchfork, but let's see. To, yeah, a bash could be a fet. And I almost read this as to bash something, to knock something, to hit it. Uh, but in fact, it's a it's a noun. It's a bash, a gala, a big party, or a fet from French for celebration. And here we have, like the Australian outback, it's arid, very dry. And the upper hand is the edge. So there we go. Okay, here we have delegation. I don't immediately see it. I feel as though there are a few things this could be, but it's a lot of letters. So went it alone, could be, so. oh right, I got seep from soloed and then I sort of moved on and didn't really look any further. I mean, I guess a delegation could be a conference maybe. But I don't know, I'm, I'm not very confident about that. So let's check the crosses. Smooths out could be evens out. Muppets makeup, Muppets makeup. I don't know. I don't really think conference is correct. I'm going to delete that. The con part seems pretty plausible, though. Okay, so Muppets makeup. What does that mean? What comprises Muppets? Maybe, you know what? I think this is all wrong. Everything here is wrong because I think filter through is actually sift through. Sm smooths out is irons out. And then that allows Muppets makeup to be felt, the material that I suppose Muppets must be made of, which is quite plausible. So I'm sorry about that. Um, 
it's always quite distressing when um when you can pile incorrect answers upon each other and they sort of seem plausible enough i mean evens out and smooths out i think is completely fitting seep and sift a little bit less so seep seep isn't as good as sift for filter through but i could still see it something seeps through a porous material it filters through that porous material um it's not a direct synonym but it but i think it's it's close enough that it's plausible but sift is better and then here we have i guess oreo o's post cereal is there a cereal that is oreos and then whatever blank wants blank gets looks like lola to me it would be a name presumably so that seems a pretty a, a uh, name that fits well enough. And then we all put things on TV sometimes. Oh, right. This is the thing where it's probably air. To, I see. To air is human. Sort of an odd claim to make. We all put things on TV sometimes. We really don't. Most of us never do that. Whereas these other things don't really seem self-contradictory. Um, to, air on, to air on the G-string to make a mistake would be to play a wrong note in a violin sonata on the G-string. And that's entirely makes sense. Clean Air Act is, I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous phrase, but it makes sense. But I mean, I guess to air is human is an accurate, it's an accurate sort of translation of we all put things on TV sometimes. This is just a strange thing for someone to say. I guess if you were working in the television industry, you could say that sort of thing to one another because that's how it would feel in your world. All right. Uh, delegation. Why do I not see what this is? Very irritating. Uh, skill never performed right. This is the skill that Athos never performed. Wow. I don't know why I'm not seeing these. Grab suddenly could be Snatch. Actress Thurman could be Uma Thurman. A DC player could be Nat for National. I think I've learned that in the crossword at some point. To vote out, say, could be to unseat a politician, for instance. And where Nintendo is headquartered, I think Kyoto. I think Kyoto, Japan is where Nintendo is headquartered. And barrel wood could be oak. Oak barrels, pretty common kind of barrel. Numbers for a diva. So a diva, in this case, an opera singer, could be arias, which are uh, songs in operas that feature, feature a singer, particularly. General on a menu could be General Tso's from General Tso's from um, Chinese sort of American Chinese restaurants. General Tso's chicken, and then here we have birthplace of seven U.S. presidents. I'm, must be Ohio based on the crosses, the state of Ohio. Here we have lip balm brand with a pod shaped container. I don't know. Oh, skill never performed. It must be musketry. Okay, I'm not very surprised I didn't get that immediately, but but with some crosses, it, it was much more apparent. So Athos never performed musketry, I suppose. And a fretboard locale on a guitar, the fretboard is part of the neck. A 1996 musical set in New York's Alphabet City, this would be uh, Rent, I assume, based on the crosses, and 1996 sounds plausible. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. To condescend to... And then here we have pink, red, hue. Pink, red, hue. Not sure offhand. And here we presumably have another theme clue. Headline after Jane becomes queen. Here, the hair, air. So what other form of air can we have? We have air, E-R-R, air, H-E-A-I-R, Air, A-I-R. Um, what other ways can air be spelled? I don't know. I'm, I'm really hitting a... I, I can't... I'm trying to think of other forms of that homophone, and I can't quite... Anyway, something to regress to. Something to regress to. And here we have the very top. Could be the peak or the acme. Kind of thermometer. 
a heat thermometer? I'm just saying that because Acme would have an A there. First word of Sondheim sending the clowns. Ah, Stephen Sondheim, the great, uh, the great composer of musicals, um, recently passed away, sadly. I wonder if this crossword was um, released maybe earlier than it otherwise would be to, to get that in there. Here we have Mother of Helen of Troy. Boy, and I don't remember that either, which is which is pretty frustrating. Okay, so amnesia in soap operas. It could be a trope, maybe. Amnesia in soap operas, for e.g., so for instance, so obviously trope isn't a synonym of amnesia in soap operas. It's not defined by that, but it's an example of it. So that's why I'm thinking it might be that. American Acquisition of 2001. I don't know why this is in my mind, but I think this is TWA, Trans World Airlines, which was acquired by American Airlines in, I guess, 2001. I wouldn't have remembered the year, but but with that T and three letters, that's my guess. Diminished could be waned, decreased over time. Voice with an echo. Voice with an echo. An echo is capitalized, so it's either a person's name or a brand. Does that have something to do with Alexa? Alexa's the Amazon sort of robot lady, right? Is an Echo something that... I'm guessing this is Alexa. I don't know what an Echo is, but I'm guessing it has something to do with Alexa. Ah, so the very top does start with A, but it's not Apex, and it's certainly not Peak. It's, well, it's not Acme, sorry. It is Apex, not Acme or nor Peak. Okay. Um kind of thermometer. Oh, this pink red hue must be coral. So I suppose an oral thermometer, and that makes Leda, the mother of Helen of Troy, which does look right now that I see it. So headline, after Jane becomes queen. Heir to the throne? I mean, with something around queen, heir, meaning the someone who inherits something, would be the most obvious one, but we've already used it. I sort of assumed we weren't going to reuse them, so I just didn't even really consider it. I don't know. Huh. Let's let's look around. Singer Lovato. Demi Lovato, I think I've heard of. All right, so it's not it's not air with an H at the beginning. So what is this? Oh, I see. Jane Eyre. Okay. Ridiculous. I assumed this was going to be... I didn't... Okay. For some reason, I was trying to think of something that would be plausible in reality. Obviously, Jane Eyre, the fictional character, never became queen. That's a little bit thin, I think. <laughs> Assuming that Jane, generically, is Jane Eyre. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So we've managed to find another homophone of air by extending the search into uh, proper nouns, into names. And I'm not, I'm, I'm in no way am I surprised that I didn't land on that earlier because I was in no, I was absolutely not, um, I was absolutely not thinking along those lines whatsoever. Anyway, a delegation is a contingent, a group of people sent to a conference, for instance, something like that. All right, to condescend to is to deign to, to lower yourself to something or somebody. Something to regress to, oh, I see, you could regress to the mean, the mathematical average. Um, something regresses to the mean, it falls back to the average. Uh, first word of Sondheim, Son in the Clowns, right? I'm actually not sure offhand. Isn't, probably. Isn't looks plausible here. And hawks have sharp eyes, I suppose and modern home of ancient Persepolis, Iran. So that's it. That is the Wednesday puzzle. And I really <laughs> I really enjoyed this theme until that last one. I, I have to admit, don't like heir to the throne. Not thrilled that we threw in a proper noun and then clued it with Jane, just generically Jane. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know that I can exactly explain explain why I find air clued as Jane to be a little bit silly, but somehow I do. I really like the rest of them. 
to air as human, despite my nit- nitpicking about the ridiculousness of the claim, we all put things on TV sometimes, it's it's fair enough as something that does resolve to, to air as human. And then Little Prince taking a bath, Clean Air Act, I think that's incredibly clever. I think that's probably the most clever of all of these. And then Air on the G-String, I'm pleased... I'm pleased to have gotten that right off of the bat. Um, it was uh, it was helpful to s- sort of start conceptualizing the theme a bit before, e- even though I didn't necessarily understand entirely what was going on with it. It gave me a few ideas and put me on the path. And then um, outside of the context of the theme, and I think honestly, in part because of this uh, this final theme answer, I um I did struggle a bit down here in the lower bit of the grid, sort of southern southern region, southern twenty percent or so. That gave me a bit of a struggle. And then how did I how did I break out of that? I guess it was trope, and then TWA, and then Alexa, and then everything sort of everything got a lot easier from there. Um, I don't think I ever saw this. Did I? Oh, I did see it, but I didn't ever answer it. Lip balm brand with a pod shaped container. Oh, and then I don't think we ever looked back at church cross, rude. I think this is um, this is a word for, a sort of an archaic word for a cross. And I think it's related to, for instance, um, Holy Rood, which is the seat of um, the Scottish Parliament uh, here in the UK. Um, I think that is the same, I think that's the same word or the same derivation. Um, and I don't think there was anything else that we didn't see over the course of the solve. Yeah, I would say this was a, this had, this certainly I felt as though we were heading into, we're, we're dipping our toe into the more difficult end of the week uh, as we, as, as tomorrow we transition into Thursday, which as I've said before, I think of as the first sort of tricky puzzle of the week. Um, you can have difficult things in any day, any any day of the puzzle, puzzle especially for any given person. Uh, but I always think of Thursday. That's when it starts getting tricky. And um, there was a little bit of of nodding towards trickiness in this puzzle with our with our little four-answer theme that <laughs> established a pattern and then kind of broke it here with this proper noun, air. But, I mean, I, 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 it was the case that when I was trying to, to arrive at that homophone, I was thinking, I'm pretty sure... I've, I have all of the all of the regular words that sound like air. Anyway, let me know how that strike struck you. Do you disagree with my my skepticism around this Jane Eyre business? I, I otherwise thought it was I otherwise thought it was quite good. Don't really have any complaints around the rest of the puzzle. I don't think. Um, so that's that. That is that. I hope you enjoyed the solve. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. If you tried it yourself, and if you enjoy this series these videos, please do subscribe. Like I say, I am, uh, it'll be fun to hit 4,000 subscribers. Again, it doesn't really mean anything, but it'll just be nice. It'll be nice to see that tick over and have that first, that thousand digit change. And we're not so far. We're just a few, few dozen away from hitting that number. So give it a, give, give it a subscription if you watch this series. And if you think you know somebody who might like it, then pass it along to them. They, they may well. And, uh, if not someone individually, then to your online community at large. And if you want to directly support this channel, then do um, do consider heading over to the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there for a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency, you can get a wealth of bonus video solves dating back for the, the months that this Patreon campaign has been running, as well as the new ones as they go up on a weekly basis. And um, you can also get exclusive access to an additional channel at the Discord chat server, uh, which is free broadly for anyone to join. So so feel free to go join that regardless of your Patreon status. But if you do back the Patreon, you can connect to your account through the Patreon site and it will unlock your benefits. And uh, all of this is linked in the description field underneath the videos. Finally, for those who contribute at the generous benefactor level on the Patreon campaign, um, those people are entitled to be thanked at the end of these videos because I really do appreciate their generous contributions. And today, I would like to thank Resmi, as well as, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you, Resmi, 
Thank you, Hood Monster. Your ongoing support is very much appreciated. And thanks to everybody else who's backed the Patreon campaign. And thanks to you for watching this video. I'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle, that potentially tricky puzzle. And I hope you join me for the solve. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Uh -huh.